Hello everyone, welcome to another Meeting in Your Pocket video, Limerence Anonymous. Step 5. I'm Carol and I suffer from limerence. You can go to my playlist, um, Limerence Anonymous, a 12-step program for limerence, if you want to know the rest of it. Um, it has an analysis with the aid of AI, www.iask.ai, and according to them, I did put out the idea of analyze step five, admit it to God, to ourselves, and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. Analyze it according to limerence. I thank Alcoholics Anonymous for their idea. I do go to open AA meetings to help myself deal with my problem with limerence. I will be sharing experience, strength, and hope sometimes, and uh, talking about how cunning, baffling, and powerful limerence is. Okay, the step five analysis starts this like this. Limerence is characterized by an intense romantic attraction and emotional dependency on another person, often accompanied by obsessive thoughts and feelings. It can lead individuals to behave in ways that may not align with their values or the reality of their relationships. <clears throat> this step in a 12-step program addresses the need for self-reflection and accountability which are crucial for personal growth and recovery from limerent behaviors. I'm dealing with a limerent situation, and um, I might identify with some of these behaviors, following behaviors. <clears throat> the importance of admission. Step 5 emphasizes the act of admitting one's wrongs, which serves several purposes. Self-awareness. Acknowledging one's actions and their impact on oneself and others is essential for understanding the patterns of behavior associated with limerence. This step encourages individuals to confront their feelings honestly rather than suppressing or rationalizing them. <coughs> Accountability. By admitting these wrongs to another person, individuals take responsibility for their actions. This accountability can foster a sense of community and support which is vital in overcoming challenges related to limerence. Spiritual aspect. The inclusion of God, quote-unquote, in this step highlights the spiritual dimension that many 12-step programs incorporate. For some, this may mean seeking guidance or strength from a higher power, and it can be whatever you understand it to be, while for others, it could represent a commitment to personal values or ethics. In other words, the atheist can find this useful. Identifying wrongs related to limerence. When applying step five specifically to limerence, individuals might consider various aspects. Obsession. Recognizing how obsessive thoughts about the interest of limerence have affected daily life, relationships with friends and family, work performance, or mental health. Now we covered this in step one. Boundary violations. Admitting instances where one may have overstepped boundaries, whether emotional or physical, in pursuit of connection with the limerent interest. If anything, I've avoided, I've avoided it so much for fear of crossing over to a point where I've, uh, where the situation hasn't been allowed to uh, evolve. Even I had to end the situation, but that was only one of the reasons I ended it. There were others too. <coughs> Neglecting responsibilities. Yeah, limerence is exhausting. Um, when I'm tired from dealing with limerence, when I'm exhausted, it's hard for me to do things um, like, you know, household responsibilities and other things, uh, social responsibilities, even my relationship with my roommate. Acknowledging how limerent feelings may have led to neglecting personal responsibilities or commitments. Dishonesty. Reflecting on any dishonesty towards oneself or others regarding feelings or intentions related to the limerent experience. Every time I've dealt with my limerent person, I've had to ask myself, and this is pretty exhausting too, having to continually, incessantly ask myself, what are my motives for doing this or saying that to this person? Is it my limerence or is it, um, is it genuine concern or uh, friendship or, or love? Sharing with another human being. The act of sharing these admissions with another person can be transformative. Vulnerability. Sharing one's struggles fosters vulnerability, which can lead to deeper connections with others who may have experienced similar feelings or issues. 
Feedback and Perspective Engaging in dialogue allows for receiving feedback that can provide new perspective on one's experiences and behaviors. You can only live in your head so long. And sometimes even if you think you're talking to God or your higher power, it can end up being wishful thinking. So it's good to have uh, outside help, whether it's your therapist or your sponsor or a group member. Support system creation. Yes, yeah, speak of the subject. Establishing a support network through shared experiences can help mitigate feelings of isolation often felt during episodes of limerence. Limerence can isolate you. Encouragement for change. Discussing one's wrongs openly can motivate individuals toward positive change by reinforcing commitment to recovery goals. Conclusion. In summary, Step 5 serves as a critical juncture in addressing the complexities associated with limerence. It encourages self-examination and honesty about one's behaviors while promoting accountability through sharing those insights with others. This process not only aids in healing, but also lays a foundation for healthier relationships moving forward. Probability that this answer is correct, 95%. Okay, um, this was my idea, so there's no copyright. I want to thank AI again for helping me write this out, create this uh, passage. Um, top three authoritative sources using and answering this question. Analyze step five. American Psych Psychological Association, Alcoholics Anonymous Literature, Psychology Today, articles on limerence. All right. Thank you for watching this. Tomorrow we will discuss step six.